Time good enough to take you to Bamenda on what has been playing out in that city this morning. Traders in Bamenda have staged demonstrations calling for the departure of the government delegate Vincent Ndumunji. The over 3,000 traders were denouncing a recent increase in rents of shops in markets as well as an increase in levies as well. Our reporter Premier Sheto reports that the issue has been resolved to the satisfaction of the striking traders. Our report. The one time saturated Bamenda main market, Nkwen, Tarikun, food markets, today July 12 have become a deserted area with all its occupants taken up on the streets with their worries addressed on placards they bear. Predominant of all is the increment of rents for sheds in these markets and ticket fee increments, an act which to them is inhuman. Disgruntled, these traders march through the streets of Bamenda, right through to the governor's office, chanting songs like. <laughs> And expressing dissatisfaction. We will go meeting. SDO call will be camp. If it tells them, oh, go pay, we rent. So, time for go pay, we rent, we go again. They will refuse to tell we rent. The next way they do now, now for come for your store. Ask you whether you get store, now would the rent store. So, they did press we. So, now why that one I say, I'm saying we go for street to people. It became necessary for an intervention from the Secretary General to the Bamenda City Council to sit in for the government delegate who was absent. So at the City Council, we have decided that uh, while waiting to restudy the deliberation that was studied and adopted by our senior councillors during our last session, duly signed by the government delegate to the Bermuda City Council, duly forwarded to the senior divisional officer for approval. Pending this study that we must get into now to probably come to a compromise, we will go on and collect the old rates. At the level of uh, the Nkwen market, the rates remain at 8,000. At the level of uh, the Ntarikun market, 8,000. At the level of the main market and the food market, 10,000. After such consolatory words, traders still didn't return to the markets. At the time of this report, all sheds in all markets remained closed. We hope Dawn brings hope for a long-lasting solution. The incident in Bamenda this morning has brought to light a policy of many councils in the country who impose a huge levies on traders in markets. Ibune Wilindis takes us to May 17, where council authorities are demanding money for hawkers, most of whom are only looking for funds for the next academic year. The newly adopted Cameroon Penal Code says begging is punishable under law. These are some children at my 17 Park Boya who during this holiday period have decided not to beg but sell one thing or the other to assist their parents raise up money for their school fees, books, pains and needs in general for the upcoming academic year. Despite the low profit gotten in what these children sell, 100 francs daily is being demanded from each of them by the Boya Council workers, added to the fact that after collecting this money, these children are still being forced to clean the park. I came to, to, to sell so that I can have money to go to school back. If we are paying tickets, we should not sweep. If we are sweeping, we should not pay tickets. Every day we are paying 200 francs. When we are sitting on our table, we are selling, we are paying with 200 francs. Even there is no market, we are still paying 200 francs. I came to sell to my 17 to work my school fees. They started collecting, the council started collecting money, 100 francs every day for tickets. I've not said enough. When they collect me money, I was angry. While getting the plight of these children, some were threatened that if they talk, they won't sell in the market the following day. The items of these children are being seized and locked up upon refusal to give just 100 francs. The issue is, with the new penal code, and the fact that these children are being discouraged to sell, what lies the fate of the poor in the country? 
food for thought there within this. Let's now come back to Douala. It has become a tradition in many councils to open their doors to youths during the holidays. Holiday campaigns are being organized to keep youths busy and also inculcate civic values. Our reporter, Larine, our reporter Veronica Aji has been uh, touring some council areas here in Douala to look at their holiday programs. Her report. The training of youths in councils of the Litura region has become an important holiday activity. Uh, accompagner les jeunes sur différents plans, déjà pour que nous, le, nous les sortions de loisiveté euh, ambiante. This, in effect, is a way to reduce juvenile delinquency emerging from idleness. Lenge Malapa, mayor of the Douala One Council, says 600 boys and girls within the age range of 17 and 25 would assist in keeping Douala clean. Mais en retour, nous attendons de qui nous aide à lutter contre le désordre. Emptying gutters for water to move freely and join in fighting urban disorder. Nous allons les amener à curer euh, les caniveaux. The holiday activity to begin on July 15th shall enable youths have access to ICTs and cancel activities. For this 2016, civic education has been introduced. Nous allons associer à ces stages une éducation civique. This to enable youths of the area know more about their country and eventually brandish patriotism. Qui soient beaucoup plus patriotes qu'ils ne le sont aujourd'hui. Youths of the Douala 5 municipality on their part have already begun the exercise. They are perceived in streets cleaning and making the town all beautiful. At the end of holidays the boys and girls would each receive financial support to promote their education. Out of the country, the United States has been rocked by a protest in the past week. Demonstrations sparked by the death of two African Americans by law enforcement officers and a retaliatory killing of five police officers by an African American. Now, these uh, ci now cities are flooding with uh, demonstrations reflecting uh, outrage concerning uh, this issue. But why some target racial discrimination, others demand police reforms. And some blame the, the and some blame the incident on lax gun laws as well as uh, social inequalities. Let's have the details with the VOE. In the past few days, Americans of every race have taken to the streets protesting racism. This protester in Chicago expressed what many African Americans feel. Black people don't get fair treatment. We used to be former slaves. We were segregated. Less than 50 years ago, we just got the right to vote. We got a black president, but that's not enough. We need a lot more change. Some Americans say law enforcement policies have become too oppressive for all. This is a system that only meets the interests of the ruling forces who rule over the system. It does not have the interest of humanity at heart. Um, now is the time for people to be in the streets protesting these outrageous murders that go on, you know, month in, month out, year in, year out. And people are tired of it. People are outraged. They want justice. But law enforcement jobs are more dangerous than ever, and officers are under too much pressure, says Dallas Police Chief David Brown. We're asking cops to do too much in this country. We are. We're just asking us to do too much. Every societal failure, we put it off on the cops to solve. Not enough mental health funding. Let the cop handle it. Not enough drug addiction funding. Let's give it to the cops. Here in Dallas, we got a loose dog problem. Let's have the cops chase loose dogs. It, you know, schools fail. Give it to the cops. There also is rising frustration with the power of the gun industry to block any law that could curtail lucrative weapons sales. Gun lobbyists argue that armed civilians could help stop active shooters before the police arrive. They always say, you know, we're there to stop the next mass shooting, but they hear the gunfire and run away, so, you know, where's that? that reaction that they're supposed to have. Massive protests are a sign of widespread discontent, but also societal divisions in the country. If this country doesn't get united, we're going to fall apart.
And given recent events, that is a big challenge that lies ahead. Zlatica Ho, VOA News, Washington. And that does it for this edition of the English Prime Time on Spectrum Television. I want to thank you very much for your kind attention. Programs continue on Spectrum Television. Up next is La Press Refello Match with Juana Henry and his uh, team of experts who will be uh, dissecting uh, the football events of the weekend. I'll be with you tomorrow, same time, for another dose of information. Goodbye. Good night from Duala.